Hey everybody, it's the Nature Journal Workshop. I'm John Muir Laws and I'm going to show you a few tricks to help you draw bird feet. I know this is just a little piece of drawing birds, but it's one that I hear from a lot of folks that gives them a lot of grief. So we end up hiding our bird feet underneath a leaf or sticking them in the water or behind a branch. Um, but you don't have to be afraid of, of, of bird feet. And with a few little tricks, you're going to be able to pop them into your drawings in a way that's really convincing and fast and will be kind of <clears throat> in, in, in keeping with the, the rest of the feeling of your illustration. So let's just take a look at some examples of some real bird feet. Ready? There we go. Okay, hey, that's commitment, isn't it? Even though the birds may be slightly anatomically incorrect, um, you got to give uh, some, uh, some, uh, some, some credit where credit's due. This is going all the way on your bird feet. If you want to commit a little bit less, do them on paper. Um, so let's just take a closer look at some of these bird feet here. Um, so these are, were sketched in the field. Um, what I want you to notice is that there's not a lot of detail here. Um, I've got some lines and some basic angles going down, and um, where I couldn't see any more detail on my bird feet, I stopped. And notice that the, the drawings themselves are fairly loose, um, or not very detailed, and that the bird feet themselves are in keeping with the same level of detail of the drawing. So if you have a fairly non-detailed bird and a hyper-detailed bird foot with all the scales and all the little claws and bits and bobs, um, that can be really distracting. And what's going to happen is then people will look at your drawing and what their eyes will do is go immediately to your bird feet. Now, if you want that, that's great. If you've got a lot of confidence in your bird feet. But a lot of people find that it is a lot easier um, to just essentially show what you can see from the distance that you're looking at the bird. So you don't have to have an encyclopedic memory of bird feet, but actually understanding a few basics of the structure of bird feet is going to help. Let's just take a look at uh, one more little set of examples here, and we get close to some of these bird feet, and you can see that there's, there's some structure here. I've got, um, in some cases, some individual toes, and it suggests what is going on with the bird feet, um, but it's it's not overworked. And, and birds can do lots of interesting things with their little bird feet, and um, so you actually do have some, some wiggle room, the way that they grab a branch, um, the way that their, their toes are going to flop um, around and over uh, branches can be really idiosyncratic, but um, try um, just uh, going online, taking a look at some photographs of bird feet. One of my favorite, a couple of my favorite sites, you go to birdpixel.com or seeingbirds.com, and in both of those, um, you can get up close and take close looks at the, these photographs of bird feet. And you'll find very often, you know, there's, like, I didn't know you can kind of grab the branch from the side, and, oh, but that bird is. So let's take a look at some of the anatomy behind bird feet, right? You are now the bird, and what you're looking down here is you, you put on your x-ray specs, and you're looking down at your own feet. So there's your right foot and your left foot. You're the bird. Um, let's notice one really interesting uh, thing here, is that each toe has a different number of major straight bones in it. There's a claw at the tip, but the back toe has one bone, then the inside two, the middle one three, and the outside one four. Now at this point you might be thinking, wait, this is going to be getting into way too much detail for me, but, but hang on with this thought and you're going to see that that one little observation can actually inform a lot of aspects of your bird foot without you having to get way overextended with drawing detail on your bird foot. Um, I'd say the danger of understanding the bird fit, foot is that people often will then end up drawing them like this foot on the left, and um, they understand we've got these three big toes, and I'm even going to draw you know, how many segments I have in each one. Um, 
but my my angles here are all off on this one on the front. That's I've got my foot position as if I'm seeing it from the the top, but then I have my leg coming down and and into that. So take a look at the one on the right. If you're looking at a bird from the side, that's probably a lot more uh, accurate towards what you're you're going to see. Um, so. Uh, Let's not do those kind of peace sign foot birds, but we do want to understand what is going on with the toes. So let's take a look more, a little bit more under the hood at a little bit of bird foot anatomy. All right, this is the way that your basic songbird foot is going to be set up. You've got one toe in the back, then, um, well actually here, here's a test, let's, let's try it on this. Can you look at this foot and tell me whether this is a right foot or a left foot? All right, you're the bird, you're looking down at your own feet. Is this a right foot or a left foot? If you said right, you are correct. Because inside toe has two, middle has three, outside one has four segments. So this is, this is your setup for your standard songbird bird foot. Now, depending depending on the type of bird, the arrangement of these different toes can actually be different. So in some cases, some of the toes swing, swing down or forward into new positions. So here's an example of that. If you, if you're out, uh, outside toe, the one with four, swings down, you may be a woodpecker. Um, if your inside toe swings down, you may be a trogon. Um, so in both these cases, you get this X pattern of the toes. So when you look at it from the side, you'll see something like this. So two forward, two back. Um, now, I have never looked at the foot of a woodpecker in the field and been actually able to say like, oh look, on that one, I can see like there's four little bone segments kind of coming down on that lower toe there, ah. Um, you're, you're, but you're essentially seeing this kind of X pattern. Some of the toes may overlap, but understanding what is going on there, I think really helps us as, as artists. Here's a couple of other toe arrangements. You can have all four toes going forward, like in a swift. Um, and by the way, in the swift, the feet are so small that um, you're never going to see them. So uh, anybody who's seen the foot of a swift, take a bow. Um, but uh, I never have, and you probably never will either. Um, kingfishers have this neat arrangement where two of the toes are fused together for a big part of their length. And then you'll see these little toe segments kind of coming out of what looks like one thicker toe. And then there are toe segments. Um, so those are just some of the, the variations that you can see with toes. If you're putting webbing on your feet, the webbing can go in a, several different ways. Um, the standard is the duck. That's the second one on the top. Um, three big toes forward with two big pieces of web. Down on the right-hand corner, this is a cormorant, parrot, pelican, and booby style, um, where all four toes are connected by webbing, so three sections of webbing connecting four toes. Um, the webbing can also be partial. And on the far left, we have coot style. Um, next time you get to see a coot foot out of the water, of little, one of those sort of weird green lobey toes, take a really close look at them. They're really cool. You can see the um, reflections of those separate bone segments in the lobes on the toes. Each bone segment has its own little private lobe section sticking out. So coot feet, really, really cool to see. So that's, so you can have your toes um, three forward, one back. There's a few variations on it, but you know, this is, this is your standard, your standard model. Now let's think a little bit like, why do I care? Why is it going to be really important for me to understand that I'm going to go one, two, three, four. Again, that's swinging from the back, one big segment, then inside two, middle three, outside four. But let's take a look at how that really gets reflected in bird feet. 
Let's start with that toe that is going backwards, right? That, that backwards facing one toe there. Notice that it is one big straight bone. It is not going to be able to bend in the middle. It cannot wrap around the branch. It can pivot where it meets the little foot, but um, it's not going to itself, that section is not going to be able to wrap around the branch. The claw at the tip of it can bend and swing in, but you're not going to see that wrapping around the branch. So that is probably, if you just change that in your bird feet, your bird feet are going to be a lot better if you don't break the back toe of your bird by wrapping it around a branch. That is fantastic. Um, you can take the rest of the day off and you have solved probably the one big kind of great offense of, of, of drawing bird feet. Um, so here we have a few more of those back toes. And notice that the, the front toes, when you're seeing it from the rear here, you're seeing some of those toes hooked around the front end of the branch. Um, the middle toe is the longest, and so you'll often see part of that middle toe dangling down on the other side. So you're seeing your side with the straight, and um, let's also notice that as that back toe comes out, there's sort of a fleshy pad and then the hook. Um, that gives you a really good, solid back toe. Um, so again, this is the back toe view. You've got your straight with the claw on it, you see a few of the toe tips dangling around the other side of the branch, um, and very often they will be loose, just sort of limply hanging there instead of gripping the branch tightly. Um, if we look, however, at the front of the foot, we're going to see a different arrangement. So here we see the three front toes, and depending on how forward or backward the, the uh, where the, the foot is coming down, you may see where the leg intersects the toes, or you may just see the toes kind of drooping over the, the, the front of the branch. But you've got all one, two, three toes coming out. The central toe is the longest, and you often are going to see the back claw hooking towards you um, as you look um, underneath the branch. All right, here is a little test. Do you see that one big lone foot in the middle? So are you looking at a um, the outside of the foot? All right, so if the bird is, is perched on the branch in front of you, are you looking at the outside of its left foot, are you, or are you looking at the inside of its right foot? So decide whether which one this is. If you said you're looking at the outside of the left foot, you are correct. Because we see there's those four segments there, and we're, if you look on the far side, that far toe, you see that big joint in it? Right? That, that is, that's where you have those two bone segments. Because there are two bone segments, you often see on those inside toes more of that single knuckle prominently sticking out. Because it only has one place that it can bend, that joint will often stick out at a kind of a weird angle. So even though that toe has fewer joints in it, the joint that is in it is going to be more prominent. The outer toe tends to be more like a hose, just kind of wrapped around the branch. But the inner toe with that one segment, uh, or that, that one joint in the middle of it, um, that, that bend in that toe is going to be more prominent. Take a look at the bird on the right. Um, its right foot there, the one higher on the branch, you're seeing a change in the angle of it where that one toe, it's got its big joint. And on the f uh, far side, the littlest toe is curved more smoothly around the branch. Um, one other kind of, uh, of fun thing to notice here, the bottom, or that is the left foot, or the um, lower leg 
on this right hand bird. Notice how two toes are together and one is separate. You start looking around on a bunch of birds. Here, this one on the right, you see the same thing. One toe by itself, two toes together. A lot of birds will do this. You start looking around on photographs of, of birds and you'll often see this sort of two toes together, one out there, they're, they're separate. That is, um, that's a fun thing to look for on bird feet and it just kind of can give your birds a little bit more of a, a, a lively pose. This final uh, pair of drawings here is also just to help us consider, are you looking down at the feet or are you looking up at the feet? Because that's really going to change the angles and the details that you, you see. So just consider there's the front and the back view, and then there's the top and the bottom view. Um, all of those are useful things to consider when you're drawing your bird feet. So now let's actually draw a couple of bird feet. What I would like you to do is to get out a piece of paper and a pencil and we are going to draw bird feet on these two birds. All right? And uh, one is going to be from the front and one is going to be from the back. Um, here you can see my kind of go-to approach for initially blocking in the positions of legs and feet. I'll draw a little ball for the foot and a stick coming down to the top of that. So that helps me position my bird feet. Once you like your bird feet and um, the position of those legs, it's time to then draw in the branch. So notice I'm drawing the feet first, then the branch. Feet first, then the branch. If you do the branch first, um, you often end up having to really stretch the legs way too far to have them reach the branch, or really scrunch up the legs too short um, to, and the, the branch can really cramp you. So get the legs in the kind of natural position that you want, then draw your branch to meet your feet. Once you like your foot in your branch positions, you're ready to start drawing in some details. So what I do is I'm going to draw a central shaft that is coming down to a little bit of a cone. There's a little bit of a swollen cone at the top of the bird foot. So I've got the shaft that comes down, slight widening at the base of that, that foot. And then I'm going to attach my toes on the bottom of that. So the upper one here, we're looking at the back. And on the one on the bottom, we're looking at the front. What I do is I first draw in the toe or the toes that are on the side that are closest to me. So on the one that's facing away from me, that top bird, I have that central um, straight back digit coming down as a little cylinder dropping down out of the back of that foot. It's a little bit more complicated on the one in the front, but let's take a closer, where well, you're seeing the, the feet from the front, but let's take a closer look at that. Notice that I am suggesting that the outer toes are just kind of wrapped more tightly. The central toe, that longest one, I'm showing that that is longer. And if I am going to kind of get a sense of um, knuckly, knuckleness um, in these bird feet, that's going to come in on those inner toes, the one with just those two segments on it. Um, so if I add the toes that wrap around the other side and a little bit more detail to these feet, you can see these kind of starting to crystallize a little bit more. So um, I've drawn in here's without. Let's take a look at the top one. There's the claw on the bottom of the foot, right? And I have just the tips of the toes dangling down off the other side of the branch. And very often you'll see that long central toe dangling down around the other side of the branch. On the bottom one, I am um, making my, um, I can sort of give it more of a hint of the knuckles. 
um, of the inner toe, and I have those outer toes, um, the, the outer and the central one, kind of a little bit more sitting, sitting together. So there's not a lot of detail here. I'm putting in a little bit of the hook of that of the claw from that back toe swinging around on the, the, the bottom of the, the, the branch of that lower bird. If I then just put tone on top of that, they're starting to feel like solid little bird feet. So I'm getting the suggestion of there's the outside wrapping toe, there's the long central toe, there is the inner, um, the inner toe, and if one of them is going to have an angle, that's going to be that's going to be the one. Um, also, just take a look on the upper bird. Notice how the foot comes out, and as it starts to disappear around the uh, around the other side of the branch, there's an angle there. There's sort of a drop off. There's a shelf um, instead of just having that smoothly kind of come down like a tube. Very often you'll see a nice little angle on the, the top edge of, that, of that, that foot. The final thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of detail. And if you have a white gel pen, that's a great tool for adding in this little bit of detail. What I'm going to do is give a few little highlights onto the, the foot of this bird. And that's going to do a lot to make it look like these are scaly feet. So here's without the highlights, and here's with. See that again? Without the highlights, here's with the highlights. And so a few um, highlight strips across the um, upper part of the foot. You might also give a highlight across any place where you see a knuckle. And just a little bit goes a long way. People see that and they'll go like, oh, these are kind of scaly feet. And that's a lot more effective than drawing in scale, 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 all the way up that foot. So a little bit of those highlights and it goes a long way. So that's kind of a, a step by step of walking through the bird foot. Now let's take a look again at a few sketches in my sketchbook. Um, that, and you'll see that some of these basic principles coming in, and you'll see that in a lot of my field sketches, I'm not really getting fussy about the feet. And more specifically, if the bird itself is loosely handled, the feet are going to be the same way. If I'm doing a close-up detailed drawing with a lot of photo reference and getting just fine feather by feather detail, in that situation, I'll also have the luxury of looking at the bird foot um, in photographs, and I can get a lot more of those details there, and then I'll drop that detail into my drawing. But generally speaking, the fast sketch in the field um, is going to have a foot with a lot less detail in it. So here are some kingfishers, and the feet on these birds are really simple, but notice that the, the level of detail on the feet is kind of keeping, is, is in sync with the level of detail of these drawings themselves. Here are some cute little barbets. Really, really sweet little birds. And when we get up to their feet, you sort of see that there's, um, there are, the foot comes down, there's that cone on the top, and then an angle where you kind of disappear over the other side of the branch straight back toe. I think I should have put a longer claw on this guy, um, but that is that makes for a very effective simple bird foot with the toes wrapping around a larger branch where you're not seeing the toes um, then on the other side because the branch is too thick. Let's just look at a few more examples here. This was a little drawing and there's not a lot of detail in this bird foot but what is there suggests a lot of detail. So where there are angles in these, these, these feet, you get the sense that there actually is a bird foot down there hanging onto this branch because of where those angles are. So you're not just putting in a, a random scribble to be the bird foot. You've actually got a suggestion 
of the angles that you see. Let's check out this kingfisher's feet. Um, that's pretty simple, isn't it? Um, so they've got these little toes that come forward. Again, the kingfishers, two of their toes are fused together for most of the length. And uh, this is a small kingfisher. I'm not seeing a lot of detail through my binoculars, so I'm not drawing a lot of detail in my drawing. The last one here on this green bowl, a little bit more structure here in the feet. But notice on that lower foot, its left foot, you're not seeing the back claw because it's pointing away from you. I've got the, um, the toes doing one separate, two together. So that kind of gives you a nice sort of, oh yeah, this is a real bird foot. But um, a lot of those toes, it's, I'm not carefully delineating out, here's this toe, here's this toe. It's keeping in, kind of keeping with the, 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 the rest of the, the loose, sketchy nature of the rest of the bird. And finally, let's take a look at this little Cysticola's feet here. Um, the bottom one, you're seeing some more sort of spread out toes. There's that straight back toe with a claw coming down. The front foot is holding on to the branch a little bit more tightly. And um, I'll often do this. So it's essentially, it's a little ball with a line flicking out the bottom of it. What is that line that flicks out the bottom? That's the back claw curving around the branch and coming forward. Um, so you'll, you'll, you'll often see that. So that's a, it gives me a, a really convincing, effective little bird foot. So you don't have to go nuts either hiding or hyper detailing your bird feet. If you understand that basic structure of the bird foot, you're going to be able to construct convincing feet in the field. Again, there's three toes forward, one toe back. The one in the back is not going to bend around the branch. The three toes forward, the inside one, if you're going to see an angle, that's where you're going to see it. The outside one, that's the one that's with more joints, is going to wrap more uh, smoothly around the branch. The middle one, that's the long, droopy, dangling finger. And on a number of birds, you'll see that toe um, hanging forward and um, and and not loosely gripping on the on the branch. In some cases they are, but in a lot of cases they are not. And so there are a few tricks that really help me be able to uh, not be afraid of when I get to the foot of the bird in a field sketch. Again, if you're doing stuff with lots of photo reference, you can you can copy what's going on in those photos. And actually, a great exercise to do is to go to birdpixel.com or seenbirds.com and pull up a number of photographs of birds and just look at what the feet do. Fill up a journal page with drawings of bird feet. If you fill up one journal page with bird feet, your fear of bird feet is going to vanish. And you'll have lots of things that you can do. Just sort of think, like, how can I kind of suggest that um, with, with a few kind of efficient lines. Practice it with a number of bird feet where the photograph, you can zoom in and the bird's not gonna fly away and you'll have a great bag of tricks the next time that you are in the field and a bird perches in front of you. I'm John Muir Laws. This is the Nature Journal Workshop. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the field.